Hey guys, what is going on? It's me, Bakuri Box 12 here, and welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God update video. The public testing server just reopened for this weekend, allowing us to play with the new item balance changes, and there's quite a bit. There's a lot here, and not only that, some of these are changes we have been wanting for a very long time. They say that the 1.5 update will be happening on May 4th, and until then, we are given the opportunity to practice it. Some small but cool changes to kick it off, we now have a summon animation with a really cool light circle effect that appears underneath your summons. Hive Master Helm has this, and other items like that that summon things, you don't have to be playing on summoner for it to count. Any sort of minion that you bring to life via your mana will have this new effect. Mechanical Mace in general had some tweaks to its beam animation. The Chess room is now accessible without the ARG, you just need to say chess to gill, and of course they have reverted the April Fool's sprites back to normal. The crystal entity has had its battle reworked in a far more streamlined approach. It first spawns an easy mini boss, that being the lizard or the cyclops. The entity can attack and will stay invulnerable until the mini boss is dead. When that happens, crystal becomes vulnerable and uses the red crystal attack. 75% HP, it summons another mini boss, a little bit harder, the scorpion or fish remains invulnerable until death. Red crystal attack comes back, 50% HP, the monster monstrosity comes out, and finally whenever all the mini bosses are defeated, it resumes its red crystal attack until it dies, with these attacks becoming more powerful and more frequent the deeper into the fight you get. Base health was increased, becomes armor during the final rage at 50% HP, and I don't have any footage on it yet, but a lot of new attack types and damage values were added, I imagine so that you can't just stand behind a couple of these and obliterate them without any risk. Crystal walls no longer confuse and slow, both the lizard and the cyclops have a randomized starting position. The scorpion now does cycles through shotgun and spin attack. When it reaches less than 70% health, it switches to split scorpion phase once, and at 40% health, it uses the target attack once. It had its slowing shotgun projectile speed and damage reduced from 225 to 180, but the spiral attack has four tentacles and higher damage overall. Split scorpions do less damage, and they flash before exploding, as everything should. Glad to see that being a staple effect, and the fish is immune to stun. There's a few collision detection improvements, such as the lost sentry set piece spawning, and enemies being able to move right through it, now they'll get blocked by it. Okay, now let's get into it. The main event, the long list of item balances that they knew we've been waiting for because it starts with the Rei Katana and the Kageboshi. Two items that everyone had agreed on needed a change. A significant buff to make them more worthwhile. And they definitely got one. Rei Katana, a little less significant, but both of these got the changes that I more or less discussed in my own videos on the topic. Rei Katana's damage has gone up from 111 to 140, rate of fire to 110%, and even the range went up a little bit more to 6.2. It's a small adjustment, but this is the sea sword of katanas. There isn't a whole lot more that they can reasonably do without changing the item at its core. Kageboshi, on the other hand, is a radically different item. The MP cost went up a little bit because it's actually good now. The key holding effect is removed, the damage is 400 to 600, range is only 6, but we have 4 boomerang piercing projectiles. So this is naturally a more effective item at close range, but you still get the 5 def and 5 vit, and the sheer DPS of this thing is incredible. 2k damage on average if all your shots hit, and the cooldown is about a second. Compared to a single projectile weapon whose entire shtick was that it could pierce at unremarkable DPS, this change is nothing short of massive. Trap of the Vile Spirit had its damage increased by 150, and it armor pierces. Throw time is now half a second. The stats upon equip have changed from no MP and four attack and speed instead of three. That sounds really good. Amber Encrusted Helmet had its cooldown removed, but then out of nowhere, what I wasn't expecting was the Robe of the Mad Scientist finally got its change. It was always a small pet peeve of mine that it was basically a G-Sork reskin. It wasn't a detriment by any means, it was just weird that this was a white bag. So they removed the MP and attack bonus, defense down to 12, a 7 whiz and 7 vit bonus, which expectedly combos with the remainder of the set. They also added this on ability use proc to give you plus 25 MP. So if you're spamming Foamy, which already has a pretty low MP cost, you can regenerate a lot of it back for more bursts. Soul's Guidance, proc cooldown went down to 0.4 seconds, and the spawn chance up to 15%. Plague Poison now gives 4 attack and 4 whiz, throw time is down a tiny bit, Rezu now no longer has a stacking of that wisdom debuff, and you have to take 40 damage for it to even trigger. They also beefed up the wisdom bonus to 20. Staff of Esben had its amplitude decreased by a pretty fair amount. I was able to farm Godlands rather well with it. It didn't feel super out of the way. Rate of Fire also 
also went up. Damage decreased a tiny bit, but they note that the DPS is effectively the same. The main point was to make the weapon easier to use. Orb of Aether MP cost went up by 20. Fire Dragon Battle Armor now gives you 6 attack, and on ability use deals 500 damage to enemies within 5 squares and poisons them for 500 damage over 5 seconds. But this has a 15 second cooldown. Again, just a straight buff, so I can't really complain. Leaf Hide now gives you 5 vit but 0 whiz, and it's on ability use proc increases your defense by 5 seconds, which also has a 15 second cooldown. Water Dragon Silk Robe gives 13 defense, 0 wisdom, 5 vitality, and it's on ability use proc heals you for 100 HP and applies healing for 3 additional seconds when you're under 75 HP. And the same 15 second cooldown applies. These aren't passives by any means, but at the rate that they activate, you're probably going to treat them like that. Ring of the Sphinx. They got the Rei Katana, Kageboshi, Robe of the Mad Scientist, they even changed Sphinx. Instead of giving you the 4 wisdom, it now also gives you 4 attack. So it's an attack and dex ring, making its DPS bonuses better than Pyramid and Nile, but you still get the 100 MP. Tome of Holy Protection gives you 4 defense instead of it. Pharaoh's Requiem now no longer has a random mask behavior, it just orbits in place. Reduced the mask size and increased the radius. Hive Master Helm had its cooldown removed. Bees are now summons, as I said in the beginning, which means when you use your ability again, it replaces all 3 bees. Bees. Most importantly, however, the curse chance for the red bee is now 100% instead of 50. Ritual Robe had its wisdom beefed up to 20, which just makes it even better. Bloodshed Ring, same deal. 10 extra HP, one more defense and wisdom. Quiver of Shadows, 6 defense. Lower arc gap, more XP bonus, and it pierces through obstacles. Armor of Nil, 26 defense now and only minus 3 speed. Superior had its projectile size reduced by 25%. Gambler's Fate with a slightly lower throw time. Turncoat Cape gives 3 seconds of invisibility and activates upon taking 30 damage. Luminaire also had projectile size reduced by 25%. Divine Coronation, straight buff, 110 HP and 55 MP now. Enforcer, however, this is the one item that was nerfed. The arc gap is now more than twice as wide. Lower speed, lower lifetime, lower range. I don't know if anyone is complaining about this being too good, and considering that it's a weapon only the ninja and samurai can use, which aren't exactly the most popular classes. I'm not sure if this was a necessary nerf. It's still a completely usable item. I was messing around with it and shredding gods still, but I can't entirely speak on its necessity, and I certainly preferred the way it was before. Ballistic Star. Shots now pass through obstacles for less interruption. The angles of the shots have now changed, so that the stunning projectile of the star is shot out straight ahead, so it's easier to aim. Centaur's Shielding. Proc duration is up to four and a half seconds. Battalion Banner. The damaging buff is now down to 0.6 seconds, but the cooldown of buff application is down down to point 0.2. Oryx is a Scutian. Throw time, fewer seconds. Longer stun duration. Significantly higher damage. Higher radius. Higher max cast range. Thousand Shot now has a higher minimum damage, but a slightly lower maximum. One less XP bonus. And that minus five speed is now gone. Sealed Crystal Skull. I haven't heard that name in ages. Less minimum wisdom, and it ignores 70 defense now. Bottled Metasozoan removed the cooldown. Cloak of the Mad God. Lower cooldown. Lower MP cost. Five defense on equip. Higher feed power. Light Show Scepter. Lower mana cost. 20 wisdom on use instead of 10, which is then increased to 50 if you're using the whole set. Performer Hat gives 77 HP, lower cooldown at 15, and the proc chance is up to 20%. Ancient Spell had its minimum damage increased by 2, and you now get 2 speed and 5 it. Harmonious Harp has higher speed, lower lifetime, 0.5 higher total range, and 5% higher rate of fire. Nectar Crossfire, a little more damage. Orcs's Great Sword, lower maximum damage by 30, but a higher rate of fire by 10%. And most notably, its range is back up to 3.5 like standard swords. Tricorn of the High Seas, no more cooldown, 3 second proc cooldown, has whiz mod now, and the proc damage threshold is down to 40. Staff of Eruption has no amplitude, higher lifetime, 1 tile more range. Kirichikeru has more damage, Watrimono has a lower MP cost. Reinforced Root Armor, negative speed proc removed, 0 speed on equip instead of 4, and a new on hit proc. While wearing Traveler's Trinket and taking 40 damage, plus 20 vit for 4 seconds, with a 6 second cooldown. The Daring Discoverer ST set bonuses have been changed across the board, and then they give us a list of feed power and XP changes. That's all fairly minor. Thus concluding the list of changes, that is a lot to take in. A lot of these have frankly been a long time coming, and I'm glad to finally see them. Rei Katana, Kageboshi, as I said, truly a significant update is coming our way. I genuinely think the only thing I'm concerned about is the Enforcer getting nerfed, but we'll see what the general consensus is on that. Sometimes the changes that are seen on testing don't actually end up going into the game, so that is all for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for for watching, and as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. Alright, see ya.